Okay, welcome into another edition of the Wolverine.com podcast here on, you guessed it, the Wolverine.com. Set up a little bit different today on a Friday as uh, we get into Michigan State Week. Uh, I'm your host today, Anthony Broom, joined by former Michigan uh, player, and, and you know him from the podcast with John Borton, Ryan Van Bergen, and, and there's obviously a lot to talk about. So Ryan, first, I mean, How's every, how are you feeling about this week? How's what's, what's the lead up been like for you? These are always super long weeks. Yeah. Oh, it's been exciting. Um, you know, even though I'm so far removed, you still kind of get those little tangles and butterflies that it's just a big week. You know, there, there's, there's wins and losses that are ones and zeros in your columns, but this one just means more. Uh, you can feel it. Me being from Michigan, when you're an in-state kid, uh, you got plenty of friends that uh, sport the green and white, and there's jabs going back and forth all week. Uh, so definitely feel the intensity. And, and this is the biggest matchup that I can recall. Uh, I know I've seen statistics that we've had top 10 matchups before, but uh, with the implications and how both teams are performing this season, it's all on the line. It feels almost like a little bit mini Super Bowl right in the middle of our season. Uh, you hear Harbaugh talking about playoff mentality, and it feels like that. It feels uh, there's a sense of urgency and importance that – I don't know this game has had in a long time, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's been since 1964 since both of these teams matched up, uh, both ranked inside the top 10. So if it feels that historic, yeah, that's there. there's never been more on the line uh, between these two teams, especially this late in the year. I mean, we for all the talk there is about, you know, expand the playoff and, and all that type of stuff, for all intents and purposes, this is a playoff game. Uh, this is a game that sets you up to, you know, whoever loses is still going to be in the mix for the big 10 East just because of how math works. But the person that wins that game or the person that wins this game, what you're really playing for outside of in-state bragging rights is the right for your game against Ohio state to matter the most. So that's exciting. I mean, I know Michigan people are, are sweating this out. I'm sure Michigan state people are sweating this out, but the stakes on the line, the, you know, I know people were kind of turned off by the idea that it was a, a noon kickoff, but, the entire college football world and really the entire country is going to be watching this game in East Lansing on Saturday. And, and like you said, I don't think the stakes have ever been that high, but I want to rewind a little bit because this hasn't always been a series where this much is on the line, or there's really that much mutual respect between the fan base. I mean, there's still not mutual respect between the fan bases, but in terms of what the programs have done over the last you know 10 years or so, um, things were a little bit different when you when you were at Michigan. So I guess take me through what your experience was in the rivalry and, and how you've seen it change. Well, it was different, especially when we didn't have the Big Ten championship game uh, and the divisions and things like that. Uh, the I feel like it's gotten more important with the Big Ten championship game and the divisions being where they are uh, because it's a little bit tougher to control your own destiny the whole way through, unless you don't win out through the big 10, you have to win out. Uh, like you said, and then that Ohio state games means that much more. Um, but the, the, the state of the rivalry, the way that I feel like this game goes, it's, it's just different. you we, we have obviously Notre Dame was rivals when I was there and Ohio state, obviously, but this one, it just felt like a back alley brawl. It was always a little dirtier. Um, you know, you, it was we called it inside drill when you when you played at Michigan. Uh, everybody calls it that, but it's you know there's no passes going to happen. You're just teeing off into the offensive lineman and and work and run game. Michigan State is a inside drill of a game, especially when you're on the line. They're going to run the ball at us. We're going to run the ball at them and see who breaks first. And yeah, there'll be some other plays, but traditionally, all three coaches that I had, everybody made note of the fact that anyone that wins this game, Michigan, Michigan State. You can usually look at the rushing total, and whoever has the higher number of rushing yards wins a game. Obviously, there's a ton of other statistical categories, but it's just kind of a weird anomaly that uh, that specifically can dictate who wins and who loses this game. And as a defensive lineman, uh, you kind of put a little air in your helmet, tie your shoes up a little tighter because because you're going to be a critical element to, to win in this game. Yeah, so I guess that's where we start is in the trenches and and what you see from both of these teams. I guess let's start with what you're confident about from a Michigan perspective in terms of how they match up against this Michigan State team. 
I'm confident about our offensive line versus their defensive line and being able to get some movement, provided that they don't load the box up with their secondary. Uh, that's the thing that kind of concerns me. But um, I feel like if we have all of our offensive linemen back, I know we had two guys out, we shuffle Falaga to the other side. Uh, if we have all of our offensive linemen back, I feel pretty comfortable staying in between the tackles that we should be able to find some yardage. Um, you know, it could not go that way, but I feel pretty good about it. I also feel pretty good about the fact that, you know, in a game like this, when especially when the rushing attack is going to be so critical, the fact that we have very few to no turnovers from our offense is going to bode very well for us in this game. Cause when you're just running the ball back and forth, I think we're going to see a low scoring battle. It probably won't be a ton of explosive big plays. I would be shocked if uh, either team broke 35 in this game, total points. So with that being the case, an extra possession here or there could really make the difference in the game. And the fact that we've done so well, uh, through the first half of this season taking care of the ball, I think is going to be a big advantage if that continues in this game, especially if we can happen to generate one of our own turnovers on defense. Uh, I think having one or two extra possessions would make the difference in a game that's going to be this close. Yeah, I think I'm with you there also. You know, when you look at, you know, for as much as has been made about, you know, can Michigan, does Michigan have what it takes to, you know, exploit what some of the Spartans uh, issues defensively are. I'm not really high on what they have on the back end. I think that Michigan has a chance to get down the field. And I know there's a lot, a lot has been made about, can they do, can they complete deep shots? I, I do think there's a chance, you know, you look at Michigan state's defense, they're, you know, 89th in total yards. Uh, they're, they're the 11th ranked scoring defense though. So what that tells me is that that's a defense that's bending, but not breaking right now. And if you're able to drive down the field, I, I think that, this is what I am. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. We'll talk about keys of the game in a little bit, but uh, I think this is a Michigan offense that they're content to take the long way. If, if some of those big plays aren't there, I think Michigan state is a little less content to do that. What we've seen in games against, you know, Nebraska and Indiana is that when you take those big play threats away from, from them, things kind of fall apart on them a little bit. So I think that that's probably an area where Michigan, I think I'm pretty confident that they'll be able to move the ball. I just, the key, the key there will be, you know, finishing those drives with seven points instead of three. As confident as we are in Jake Moody, uh, you don't want to settle for field goals if you go on long drives. So I think that's something that I'm probably most confident about going into this game. Let's switch over to concerns now. When you look at this matchup, what is it that about the challenge that Michigan State provides that you go, I don't know, that's going to be tough to overcome on Saturday? Well, the first thing is for us is getting in the red zone and scoring touchdowns like you just alluded to. I think that's one of our Achilles heels of our offense is the fact that we can move the ball down the field. But uh, I don't know where we rank nationally, but I just know that uh, percentage wise, we come away with field goals much more often than we come away with touchdowns. And uh, that's definitely something that if we don't convert in the red zone versus Michigan State, they're going to be around a lot longer uh, in the game, a lot longer. And um it's just something that we need to get better at and we need to find a way to get into the end zone. Um, I also get concerned from last year and it does seem like we've kind of turned a corner with McDonald's defense, but I worry about Naylor and their other receiver that I can't remember his name uh, winning some jump balls against us. I thought DJ Turner played really well the last game. I'd like to see him in there, but I remember Jamon Green and Vincent Gray just had their lunch taken from them the last time we played Michigan State because we didn't think they were coming in here with anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. And everybody's you know, can say it was a COVID year, or whatever COVID year doesn't mean that you can't play the deep ball and locate the football and make a play on the ball. Uh, if they can get themselves bailed out, if we get ahead on the sticks and slow them down in the run game, which I think we can do, I have concerns about how we'll play the deep ball. And especially if they happen to hit one or two, they're not going to leave it alone. They're going to throw some jump balls up there. Um, so be interesting to see the development because uh, if we're the same as we were last year, we could be in trouble. And if we've improved in how we defend the long ball, uh, take that away from them and, like everybody else, I think. Yeah, I, I, I feel similarly about it in terms of concerns. How is the back end of that defense going to hold up? I think the best way to describe Michigan's corner so far this year has been they've been fine. They've done their job. They've held up. It helps to get, you know this, it helps when the pass rush gets home. That's not something that happened you know, a ton last year, especially in that game against Michigan State. I also think that uh, we've seen them be a little less grabby down the field too. You know, for as much as was made about those deep shots last year against MSU, 
It was also the pass interference, uh, th those calls. And some of them were warranted. Some of them weren't. But the fact of the matter is they were called. And those calls will, will get made when you have bad technique and the refs see it. So um, how those guys have come along, I think that's a huge storyline. It's kind of crazy. Like, it's literally almost a year to the day when these two teams matched up on the field from when that game took place. So how much development has taken place since then, I think is huge. Uh, DJ Turner coming on, I think is a positive side for them. We saw already, you know, the type of playmaker he can be. Um, if a, a tip ball comes, comes his way or whatever it is uh, with the interception he had last week. So yeah, when I look at concerns, it's, it's that same thing. You know, when I Michigan state, can make those deep plays down the field with, uh, you know, Naylor and, and Jaden Reed and, and Trey Mosley's a guy that has gotten down the field on them as well. So, and I think Peyton Thorne's good enough to take advantage of that if he sees it. So yeah, to me, I'm, I'm in lockstep with you. That is by far my biggest concern of the game. So we've talked about strengths. We've talked about concerns. Let's talk matchups. Now the one matchup on Saturday that you think determines this game one way or another for Michigan. be able to hold them up in the run game uh you know both teams i think are used to getting first down runs for five yards getting to you know third and one third and two and having the whole playbook available to them i don't think that's how this game's going to go i think that there's going to be some third and sixes third and sevens some third and longs that we're going to have to convert through the air and they're going to have to convert through the air and give the real players and the real receivers a chance to make a play on the ball um not put the ball at risk uh, all those things I think are going to be huge, and it's kind of time I feel like for McNamara to to have his game um, where he can carry a little bit more of the load because I feel like both teams are both going to you know do what they can in the run game, but they're going to have to resort to passing the ball to make some conversions or score in the red zone, and whichever quarterback can give his guys the best chances to make plays on the ball downfield and not make bad decisions or turn the ball over. That's going to be the difference, I think, in this game. I think we're both going to be able to run the ball reasonably well. It won't go extremely well for either side, and they're going to have to go to the pass to, to get some of the chains moved or get some points on the board and what happens when that happens for both sides. I'm, I'm with all that. Also, when I look at the, I think what I'm looking at the most is, is Aiden Hutchinson and David Ojabo. I think those guys are probably the biggest key in terms of when you look at Michigan State's uh, offensive line they like their depth there but they kind of rotate those guys in and out like hockey lines and that sort of that lack of continuity in a game like this I think could hurt them especially like I said uh, with as good as Hutchinson has been he's going to get a lot of attention he's probably going to get held because it happens every week. every week so that opens up a guy for, like Ojabo to maybe have one of those big and Mike Morris as well I think those guys have all kind of together played really well in uh and that rotate, you know, the rotation up front of the defensive line as well. So, you know, we talked about the trenches earlier. I think the pass rush getting home, that's going to, we talk about being concerned about the cornerbacks. If, if the pass rush is getting there, that makes, makes Vincent Gray's job a lot easier. It makes Jamon Green's job a lot easier. If he's out there, DJ Turner, Dax, still everyone on the back end. So that's, that would be the area where I would think, uh, you know, whoever wins, whoever's able to handle that, I think is, is in a really good spot. So let's, we have two things here, then we'll get a score prediction. I'm going to do some fill in the blanks here for you, Ryan. First one is Michigan wins. If Michigan wins, if we limit their ground game to under 150 yards and can keep them out of the end zone. I don't care how many yards they pick up passing, but we got to keep them out of the end zone, make their kicker. I do like our kicker versus their kicker matchup. It's one matchup I like. Uh, so we need to keep them out of the end zone and make them resort to field goals. If they're kicking field goals when they're in the red zone, we're going to win this game. All right. And Michigan state wins. If I assume it's not just the opposite of what you just said, <laughs> there's a part of it that is, uh, but I think Michigan state wins the game. If for some reason they find a way to uh, manipulate their, offensive scheme to get Kenneth Walker going. I'm doing a lot of my assumptions based on the fact that Michigan will stop their run game. If somehow, some way we are unable to stop their run game, then it's going to be a very long game for us. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, I also think Michigan state wins this game. If, uh, 
if uh, Peyton Thorne can go for two touchdowns, like I said, the down, the, if he can throw the ball up and they can get guys to make plays, we have not shown that we're that good at that. I think that it, that goes in their favor. Um, so if, if Peyton Thorne has two th- passing touchdowns, we probably lost the game. Okay. Well, I'll do my, I'll do my Michigan wins. If real quick, I think Michigan wins. If uh, you know, Obviously, the the stat of the game is always who does the rush, who who has who does better on the ground rushing. I think Michigan State can probably take one of Blake Corum and Hassan Haskins out of the game. I don't foresee them taking both out of the game, and that might even open up an opportunity for Donovan Edwards to get going too. So I think Michigan wins if not only they win the rushing total, but if they're kind of imposing their will late in the game. Uh, I could see a scenario where they kind of. Uh, break later on in the game like they could have uh, like a couple of these other opponents have as the game has gone on you know Michigan just re- has just run the heck out of the ball in the second half of a lot of these games so uh, I feel like if Michigan's able to do that successfully they'll win Michigan State it's what we've talked about it's the big plays it's uh, like I said for for his for lack of confidence for his the least amount of confidence I have in Michigan state's defensive backs, if they are still able to find a way to limit what Michigan can do on the field and they are stacking the box and, you know, giving everyone a hard time. That's where I think Michigan state wins this game. Uh, I think this will be a low scoring game. I, I see this being a mud fight, a bar fight, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, those, those classic type of big 10 brawl type of games. That's what I see happening. So uh, with that, I guess we'll roll right into score predictions here. What do you see happening on Saturday? I think it's going to be slow to go, and then you'll start seeing some more creativity. Uh, I don't want to say desperation, but uh, you will see them open it up, both teams, I feel like, in the second half. I feel like in the first half, you're going to see a score of you know, 10 to 7, 7 to 3, something like that. Um, and then you'll see them open it up and get a little more creative, I think, in the second half. But uh, I do think Michigan, is it's their game to lose. We just have more on the line, I feel like, than Michigan State does. Um, and I think that we'll probably win, like you said, in a low-scoring game, something around 23-17, 23-20. Uh, I see that being a final score. I'd be shocked if either team gets to 30 points in this game. Yeah, I'm with you, and I love what you said about there being more on the line. I wrote about that this week. Like Michigan State and Mel Tucker, like Mel Tucker and the Spartans can lose this game Saturday and still be like, you know what? We've got our win over Michigan last year. We're way ahead of schedule. They can still sell that there's a plan in place and hope for the future for them. Michigan does not have that luxury. I know that they hit the reset button this offseason, but this is a game that, especially after how last year went, you cannot, they cannot afford to lose this game. And I think they know that. I think there's a sense of urgency in that building uh, to do that. I don't think guys like Aiden Hutchinson and Josh Ross or you know, Andrew Stuber, Hassan Haskins, any of the seniors are going to want to go out that way. Um, and Jim Harbaugh has never lost in Spartan Stadium as a player or as a coach. So it's hard for me to pick against them this week. I mean, there, there's just been so the progress has been so impressive and, and more so than the progress. I just think the mindset and the way that they've approached the weeks. And I think that the work that's being done Monday through Friday is showing up on the field on Saturday compared to maybe in years past. So I have Michigan winning in a lower scoring game too, barely and the over under set at 50 and a half. I have Michigan winning 26, 24. Uh, and it might take a last minute Jake Moody field goal to make that happen. But if it comes down to kicks, you have to feel pretty good about Michigan's guy. So yeah. any other final thoughts before we get out of here? Put. Yes, I do have a final thought. Put Haskins and Corum on the field at the same time, please. We have Donovan Edwards as another back. Another back. Cade Mc, McNamara running the zone read and pretending that he's faking with the ball is not going to fool Michigan State. They're going to have nine guys flowing to the one back. Not only that, but as a defensive end, if it's a shotgun formation, the back's to the one side. He can't come my way. I know I'm flowing opposite. We've got to get a little bit more creative on offense, I think. And we could make this game, I think, a lot easier on our guys. I think that Corum and Haskins, uh, it's amazing that they've had the career, the seasons that they've had with how hard people are keying on them. There's a lot we could be doing that I'm hoping we've been holding back for this game. I'm really hoping for a new formation, uh, something tricky, something new to to get an edge in this game. Um, I'm just going to keep preaching it because I feel like it'd be really hard to key on both of those guys and would result in both of them having more opportunities. So uh, I have to put my, my stamp on that and say that I would love to see that. Um, 
And I'm interested to see J.J. McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy is going to impact this game one way or the other. Uh, I just feel like that's going to happen. He is a playmaker. He is a creator. Uh, nothing against McNamara, but he's, you know, he needs the X's and O's to be in the right spot at the right time for him to find success. J.J. McCarthy does not. So don't be surprised if it's a J.J. show, if it's a close game, uh, third quarter, fourth quarter, and you see him get a series. I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually going to be watching for it. So those are my Certainly. couple thoughts. No, it certainly seems like they've been setting up for something. But, uh, well, Ryan Van Bergen has called his shot. He's calling a (laughs) J.J. game. He's calling a Michigan victory. That's going to do it for us here. Uh, If you're watching on YouTube, thank you. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below uh, for all the notifications on when we we do these videos and all those types of things. Podcasts, wherever you get your shows, Apple, Google, Spotify, it's everywhere. So appreciate that. Uh, Ryan, appreciate your time. Hopefully it goes well for the good guys this weekend. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Thanks. I'm looking forward to it. Go Blue, Beat State.